Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and uh, I'm tying another streamer pattern This is Kelly Gallup's Zoo Cougar Really effective streamer, sort of sculpting imitation um, Single hoop, which is maybe not that fashionable nowadays but they still work very, with, very effectively um, and to be honest I think nowadays a lot of the streamers it's just people trying to they're racing to see who can tie the biggest, ugliest, nastiest looking streamer without actually thinking about the function so um, in the vise I've got a size 2 3x long streamer hook this is a Varivast 2500V but you can use whatever you prefer and I'm running on some 6 odd GSP thread and I've started you can see there and I've left about a third of the shank bare in front this is my measure for when I tie in my head right, everything else is going to be tied up to this point I find that if you do this it's much easier to um, have consistent flies so they all look more or less the same and you're not going to be worried you know if you lose one you don't have your next pattern stops catching fish so the tail is two marabou blood quills tying a yellow version now I've, I like to tie these in yellows brown olive white um, but again tie the colour to suit so tail length is about the length of the hook so come in with that I'll just take a couple of turns loose just to sort of catch it and I'll position the marabou on the side of the hook on the side of the shank so this is on your side so I'm pulling it away from me and up to counteract the thread torque and I'm tying that down nice tight wraps all the way to the bend of the, the barb of the hook run my thread back up to the top up to the front trim my waist you can see there I'm still I'm still behind where I started with my thread tie in And then, that's a rubbish feather. Second one, same again, but on my side. So, have a look at it. Same length. Take away that rubbish there that I don't need. few nice tight wraps and then same again but this time I'm pulling towards myself and down right and letting the thread tension pull the marabou up to the side and I'll just run my thread over that again just to lock everything down securely and that that gives a slightly wider underbody for your belly which I'm using, now you can use several different things, I'm using a uh, ice tub it's just a uh, UV pill but you can use um, Estaz, you can use body braid, it's up to you, as long as it's white right, like the these sculptures and what have you, they've got a a pale underbody or belly and that, um, that's what this represents gives you a little bit of flash but not too much so I'm just going to batter that forward quite quick again it's not too important what this is like but I'll just run my thread through it just to tighten it up a bit protect it the gel spun thread is very very tough So 
finish that off and as you can see there hopefully that I'm my body's finishing just at that point where I cut the butts of the marabou so to support the wing there's an underwing of calf tail Not a huge amount, but reasonable bunch. Just got to sort of make sure the tips are reasonably, reasonably lined up. You don't want any too long or any too short. And I'm going to take this. I'm just going to take this and have it coming back about halfway into the tail. So pre-cut that, take a pinch and loop, another one, two or three wraps just to hold it and so you can position it and take your nail, your thumbnail, just flatten it, flatten it down and draw it back to crease it to let it lie flat. Now this is this is only to support the mallard flank feather. Right, so I've got to really cinch that down nice and tight. Support your hook because you will bend your hook with this thread. That's how how much pressure I'm putting on here. And create a nice level base. And that's very firmly tied in. Um, just I mean, you don't need this at all, but. We bit of head cement does no harm at this stage. How you prepare your uh, mallard feathers. Now, it's quite important that you pick a straight feather. Now, you can see here, this feather's got a nice straight stem and it's reasonably even side to side. You need two of them. And you, I mean, you just need to go through them. I like to tip them into a, a Tupperware tub and just sort through um, to get the feathers that are, that are suitable. It's very important that you do this. If you're not willing to do it, then don't tie the fly. Um, you'll just need to buy them. Because if you tie a feather like this, say, that's kind of twisted, your fly's, not, your fly's going to keep rolling over and twisting and it won't swim. So, I'm going to prepare my feather. This one's a bit kind of dirty, it's not very well marked, but it's the under feather, so it's a bit less important. But the key thing is, again, straight feather, straight stem. I'm just going to lie this. Why not? Come to the end of the calf tail. Again, sort of halfway into the, the marabou tail. I've got to just put my index finger on my, on the belly and my thumb and press down quite hard on top. And that sort of helps make sure it stays straight. Again, very tight wraps. You can actually tie in front just to help lock that. Then we'll take my better feather. So the same size, same length. Strip away the waist. Same again. Finger on the belly, thumb pressing hard on the back. that wound very very tightly and then it's time for your collar which is deer hair, you want a good deer hair um, you can check my video on 
tying with deer hair. There's a couple of there's a primer video. Uh, number two, I think, has got the choosing about choosing deer hair. So the collar on this has got to be a big, thick collar, right? Um, represents the pectoral fins. Just, so I've got maybe two or three pencils worth. Two, two and a half. Um, and I'm brushing out all the, the under fur. Got to stack it to get the tips nice and fairly even. And then come on and measure it halfway halfway down that mallard flank feather is what we're aiming for maybe about a third of the way something like that change hands pre-cut it right. if you pre-cut your hair when you're tying Colors, it will always work out better. Right. Take a, a loose gathering wrap over the over the hair. Another one. Now hold tight to the tips. That will be a collar because you don't want this to run onto the underside of the shank. Right. Everything should be up on top, and just pull your thread back towards yourself. Nice and tight, you can see that flaring. And then I'll just go through this, these ends. Sort of press that back. And then you can see the underside's nice and clear. Everything's on top. Just go through the butts again, just for security. Get everything nice and tight. I'm going to run my thread along the head area. Um, just there we go. So the head on this size usually it takes me two bunches. Um, a hair. I find that if I try to do it with one, uh, the GSP. The GSP can cut the can cut the hair. So sometimes one does it. On smaller flies, one bunch is usually enough because you're not packing this. This is not a tight head. Um, like you're not looking for a big buoyant floaty head. It's just to create disturbance under the water. So trimming away all the all of the tips, all at once the the butts, the thick spinny butts. And catch my thread. One, two, three loose turns. It's really two and a half, two because your first one doesn't count. And then just pull that tight towards yourself. And then you can run your thread through, working your way forward a little bit at a time. Push it back a bit. Again, don't pack this super tight, that's not what this head's supposed to be. Same again, your next bu bunch, clean out the butts, take all the fuzz under for away. Cut away the tips. We'll this in. One, two, three. Make 
make sure you've got a nice nice spread of hair and then you can come out and whip finish that nice and tight again support your hook this this gel spun thread is, is really strong and you will bend your hook if you don't support it but get that knot really well seated just come in and tidy that up and then we're ready to trim so I'll take my double edge razor blade and my first cut is just straight cut along the belly the belly nice and nice and flat like this right nothing there's nothing nothing on the underside it's just nice and smooth and then for the head I'll turn this over I'll just make sure my line's nice and flat and then for the head I'm going to or bend my blade reasonably widely. Kind of sort of push up and back. Just any wee bits of tidying up. And just trim it, take your time. You want sort of a big loose wide head. I'm just going to come in and tidy the shape up a wee bit with my scissors. I'm going to get it fairly even. And there you have it. That is a zoo cougar. Not the best head I've ever done, but it will still certainly fish. Um, wide. A wide flat shape is what you want. I mean you can trim these forever until you get them all nice and showy and super smooth. But um that there is an ideal is ideal. Um you know you're not it's no a big massive Popper slider diver head, it's not a lot of hair at all, it's no dense. It makes you fly dart and hunt underwater. Really good. So there you have it, that was the Zoo Cougar. Hopefully that's uh, that was useful. Hope I hope you enjoyed it. Um, remember to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up below if you liked the video. 
thanks very much for watching guys tight lines bye